Okay, as we are settling in, we are getting ready to start with our next session. We have Madhura here. She's going to take us through the next breakout session, how to pursue a successful leadership career. My name is Jatinder. I'm part of the IT apps team at VMware. I've been here for almost three years. I help solution for our sales team so that they can go do business and not spend too much time on the system. Um, it is my privilege here to introduce Madhura to our group and to lead the next breakout session. All of us can reach our highest potential given a safe, inspiring, and nurturing environment. This is the belief Madhura lives and leads by. Madhura is an engineering leader at Workday, primarily focusing on data and machine learning products. She started her career at Sun Microsystems, where she was part of the Java engineering team. From Sun, she moved on to Adobe to lead and build a team and ship a version of 1.0 Flash Design tool. She has spent almost a decade of her 18-year career, professional career, actively honoring and honing her leadership skills, and that is some of the journey she's going to take us along. She's mainly fascinated in two areas. One, tech and innovation, specifically its role in moving us forward as a species. Two, neuroscience and leadership, understanding what inspires people and applying it to build a rock star organization. She holds a bachelor's degree in electronics and telecommunication and master's in math and computer science. She is originally from a small town in India, came to U.S. to pursue a career in technology. She current, currently lives in San Francisco, calls it a home, and even though she has been here for eight years, she can't get enough of its hilly charm, hidden staircase, diversity of people, culture, and experiences. When not obsessed with technology and neuroscience, she's an outdoor junkie, and she likes to spend time outdoor doing hiking, snowboarding, and mountaineering. Please join me in welcoming Madhura. Is everyone having a fun time today? Do you have at least three things you've written down on your notebook that you're going to do right when you step out of this conference today? Um, I will add a few more, don't worry. Um, <laughs> you'll have a hard choice to pick which one to go with. Um, to try to get a sense of um, who is in the audience, how many of you have never managed people? Okay, about 15 people. Um, some on the fence, I don't know what that means. <laughs> but um, how many of you managed, uh, have managed for more than, uh, less than three years. Less than three years. Okay, about the same 10. And how many have been managing for more than five years? More than five years. Okay, all right, you, got, you, you ladies need to help me out here, okay? <laughs> more than five years. Um, all right, so that gives me a good sense of um, who is here. Um, in terms of me, who here is outdoor junkie, by the way? Running counts. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Yeah. Sideways. Um, so um, early, earlier um, in my career, um, I, I was trying to figure out how to describe what drives me um, or what defines me. And uh, what Kara was saying earlier about the woman that um, was trying to decide between the choices given to her. I used to be there way back uh, when. I was one of those people. Um, and as Lynn was saying this morning, um, whenever you're trying to figure out what you are about, what do you want, uh, go back to what makes you happy. <clears throat> go back to what um, actually keeps you in your uh, adrenaline zone. Um, I did a lot of thinking, and I experimented a lot or my um, 18 years so far to try to see if, oh, is this what I like? Oh, no, maybe this is what I like. And I learned a lot. I learned a lot about myself. And there are three main things um, that drive me and keep me in the happy zone. Ambitious and really, really hard goals. Hence, I do the crazy stuff like climbing. That was uh, Vincent Massif in Antarctica. Uh, which is the highest mountain in Antarctica. I've climbed five of the seven summits so far. 
um, and two more to go. So a lot more to do uh, when it comes to that. So ambitious goals definitely drive me. And um, the second thing that drives me is uh, innovation. And the way I define innovation is um, questioning the status quo. So it could be a small process that you're looking at in your day-to-day -day where you're thinking about, is this the right way to do this today? Knowing what I know and knowing what we need. So it could be a really small, as small a thing as that. Two, creating new markets uh, for Workday with the data and ML products. We're trying to go in a completely new territory. So innovation is that second thing that drives me. Um, and the third one that keeps me in the happy zone is mastery. And that's the whole reason um, I've been at this leadership thing for about 10 years. It's hard, I haven't mastered it yet, which is why I still enjoy it. Um, and um, that's how I figured out I, I'm driven by mastery. Um, I still feel like I'm in the beginning of the journey. So that's been my current obsession, leadership, getting mastery in it. Um, and most recently, I started running last year, something on the sides. Um, I did my first marathon, yay. I sucked, my time was so bad. Um, so the other thing that I'm trying now is to improve pace with my running. Um, so those are the three things that define me, and it took me a long time to f uh, figure that out. Let's focus on my leadership journey, uh, forgetting everything else. So as Jitendra was saying, I started leading back at Sun uh, way back when. I continued leading at Adobe, um, and now um, I've been at work day five years, leading in various teams. I keep going to spaces that help me learn more. I constantly change and try to experiment and figure out what uh, keeps me in a great zone. I've made quite a bit of side turns, U-turns, uh, tested out stuff that I wasn't really sure I wanted to do. Um, um, I took a long pause when I had no clue what I wanted to do uh, after Adobe. I took about a nine-month break uh, to try to figure out what do I want to do next, what am I about, and which is where I started figuring out a lot of this. Um, and in my journey, the leadership journey specifically, uh, what I realized was human beings are uh, much more complicated and unpredictable compared to machines and algorithms. I got bored with algorithms and machines really fast uh, because there was no variance. There wasn't enough variance to keep it interesting. But human beings, all of us, we are fascinating creatures. And it's so hard to sometimes predict yourself. Forget predicting what others are going to do. That was one aspect um, that was really hard uh, and which excites me. The other additional thing is when you put all of us together with all our own um, shape and form and unpredictability, the emerging properties that come out of group dynamics and teams, that makes it even more complicated to figure out, now, how do you keep everyone inspired? How do you keep everyone working together well with each other so that you can get the outcomes you want for the business? So that's why I still feel like I'm still at the very beginning of this journey. I've learned a lot, um, but there's way more to go. So that's a quick uh, view in my leadership journey. And the next hour, we'll spend talking about leadership. And I hope uh, at the end of the session, each of you walks out of here with at least one new insight, I promise you, or uh, one a uh, clear, actionable step for your own growth that you can take uh, when you walk out of this room. So bear with me for an hour. Um, and let's start with the show of hand. How many of you feel like leadership and everything that comes along with it is just way overwhelming? There is too much to learn. There's too much to uh, develop. There's too much that you need to figure out. How many of you feel that? Um, even after 10 years of being at this, I still feel like this. 
Um, how many of you have noticed the curious phenomenon? As you learn more, your to-do list keeps growing. The list of skills you need to develop keeps on growing, right? Yeah, that's what I've been, and that's why I still feel like, oh my God, there is so much I do not know still, and my list is growing. And how did I even come up with uh, this topic, and why am I talking about this? About three years ago at work day, I've been there at, uh, for, for about five years now, um, a lot of uh, um, individual contributors, people who were interested about leadership, they were curious, tech leads, they started coming to me with one question. Hey, I've heard your team really likes you. You seem to be really good at this. Can you tell me if I should pursue this track? Can you tell me if I should go on this journey? And um, I started giving whatever came to my mind. I gave ad hoc answers. I hadn't really processed the last 10 years um, that I've been learning and experimenting and adjusting um, and tweaking what I do. And uh, so many people kept on asking me. Um, it felt like, OK, it's a good time to just sit down, think about this, and try to distill this in um, useful steps or useful insights that people can actually take to decide um, what, what leadership is about. And um, you guys have probably heard um, the saying, leaders have followers, right? Um, I believe that's old school thinking. In my mind, true leaders ignite leadership in everyone around them. They inspire everyone to be a leader. Um, and if you want to be a successful leader, if you want to be a true leader, that's what you're going for. Um, you need to figure out um, the what and the how of to be that kind of leader. So we'll spend the next few minutes going over um, the most important, the most powerful and highest leverage three capabilities that you must develop to be this kind of leader. We will also go over um, the most powerful underlying qualities you need to develop to be able to get that competency. I'll give you a quick sneak peek into how your day-to-day -day is going to look like as you progress through your journey. And most importantly, we will end with, now that you told me the three things that I need to do, the three qualities I need to develop, how the heck do I go about it? How do I actually do it? Um, how many of you feel like you read books, you read articles, you read what needs to be done, um, and then feel like, uh, oh, then how am I supposed to do that? You, you never told me. You're just telling me this is what the tea leader is like. You told me this is what you need to be like. But how do I actually make that change if you're struggling with any particular attributes? So we'll cover the what, um, the most powerful what of being the kind of leader that we just talked about, and how do you go about getting there. Let's start with the uh, first, first core competency. Building trust, the ability to build trust. Um, you've heard this a lot. I'm sure you've heard this uh, quite a bit around leadership, right? Building trust. Um, and this group particularly knows if you want to get the best outcomes, you need to gather a diverse set of people on your team. If anybody we understand that, we believe in that. And we also know um, if there is someone that I'm working with that is completely different than me, their culture, their background, um, what narratives, values they believe in, it is really hard to kind of figure out that connection and find a way to build trust with them. Um, and that's one of the reasons I included this as one of the core competencies. It's really hard to develop with a diverse set of uh, people. 
it's something where there is no instruction booklet as to follow these five steps and you will build trust with Molly, let's say. <laughs> there is no instruction book that Molly's carrying around saying, if you do these five things, I will trust you, right? Which means I need to first understand who is Molly? What is she about? And how do I build that connection where she starts trusting me? And this applies in leadership, not just to your own team members. It applies to your peers that you work with, that you need to build alliances with. It has to happen with your boss. So they trust you with responsibility. It has to happen with everybody you interact with. And it is really hard to do. And the last point, the last reason I included this as the top three is, um, this is not something you can delegate you cannot delegate building trust. Um, and um, you have to spend the time and energy to do that. I'll share a story with you guys. Um, I used to have a boss. I've had many bosses over the last 18 years. I'm sure you did too. Um, and one of them, um, they did all the right things. They said all the right things. But uh, something was missing. I couldn't tell what. There, the, there was no connection. There was no um, humanity. Almost, I'm, I'm, tr um, I'm, I'm not able to find the word. But uh, it felt like a very transactional uh, relationship. It felt like a very um, somebody looking at you and looking at you like a project or a robot. In the word of the boss, and. Um, what did, what did that do to me in terms of my performance? I gave them maybe 50% of what I could do. Maybe on good days. When, <laughs> maybe when I was interacting with the colleagues that I liked working with, I gave a little bit more. But it wasn't because of that person that I um, brought my 200%, which is my norm, by the way. So... Um, and that was just one of those things where I personally realized it is really important for you to be able to build trust, build that connection uh, with the people you're working with. So that's the first competency. The second one, um, ability to grow people. This is another hard one. And um, this is another hard one for the same reasons. You cannot delegate this. This is your job, to grow your people to be leaders. You cannot delegate this. This is really, really hard to do um, because this requires you understanding what mot motivates Molly. Molly, sorry, I'm going <laughs> to... Not picking on you, I promise. But you need to understand what motivates a, a someone so that they start working on their own development. You cannot um, do somebody else's development for them. All you can do is try to frame things, try to inspire them so that they want to develop, so that they are putting in the effort to develop. And um, this is another one. There is no instructions um, that each person comes with saying, this is what I'm motivated by, and if you do this, I will invest in my own growth. And... Many times, we think we are motivated by something, but we really are not. So even if Molly came to me and said, hey, I'm motivated by money, uh, the snack program, and the other thing, uh, <laughs> that might not necessarily, yeah, I mean, that, that'll help, but that might not necessarily be the things that she's actually motivated by. She might be motivated by, give me a hard problem to solve, which is going to uh, rack my brains to no end, right? And it's different for different people, but trying to figure, first figure that out for each of your people, and then um, experimenting till you find out what inspires them. And once you get someone to that level, then the growth journey begins, because then they're invested. And then it's easier, but just getting to that point, um, this is the hard one, um, another hard one, and something you cannot delegate. The third one I picked is 
um, let me just pull up some scenarios for you guys. Um, let's do a show of hand for, um, have you ever sat in a meeting where you really, really want to say something, but for whatever reason, you don't? It still happens to me. It still happens to all of us. That's discomfort. That, that was us experiencing discomfort. Um, have you ever um, thought about asking your boss for a raise, thought about it for weeks, then months, then years, and never said anything? And this is particularly true for women, so we know this. We know this one. That's discomfort. That's essentially discomfort. Have you ever sat in a meeting where somebody's saying something at you and you know you have a response that uh, is more rational, more logical, but you just don't say anything, right? That's discomfort. Um, have you ever said something to your spouse or your kid or whoever, your friends, and then uh, regretted later that you said it. Okay? That's, that's you not uh, holding your seat or being graceful when there was discomfort. Okay? And how does that apply to leadership? As you uh, grow, as you become more and uh, as you get more and more responsibility, as you have to converse with more and more people, as you have to deal with more and more high-stake conversations, um, high-stress situations, where the uh, CEO is telling you, I need this done by five months, and your team is telling you, oh, this is going to take us four years. Okay? You are stuck in between. You need to figure out how do you handle the discomfort that gives you how do you keep your team in the inspired mode? And how do you keep your boss happy, keep their expectations, set their expectations, right? So I'm just describing just one example. But this is another one of those uh, core competencies that you cannot delegate. It's your own discomfort. You have to find a way to deal with it. And this comes in different shapes and forms. And um, if you find a way to learn from your discomfort. That's what will get you past a lot of your uh, barriers, your own barriers. So let's recap the three most powerful, <coughs> highest leverage competencies that you can focus on if you don't believe you're good at them already. Building trust with a diverse set of human beings. How do you do that effectively? Ability to grow people. How do you help them be leaders? How do you enable them to be leaders themselves? And the third being, um, how do you handle discomfort gracefully and take learning from each, each instance that you're facing where you're uncomfortable? Let's get into the underlying qualities that you will need to develop to get those three core competencies that we just talked about. I know this is the one that's cliche already. Um, Cara pulled it out. Be original. If everybody's saying it, saying it there must be truth to it, right? Hopefully. Uh, but be authentic. Be genuine. Be yourself. Um, and the way to think about this is, uh, let's say you're having a conversation uh, with your peer, team member, or anybody at home. Doesn't really matter. Or your friends. Or the friends you don't like um, doesn't really matter. But you're having a conversation, and you're trying to figure out, um, how should I react to this? <coughs> how should I show up here? Um, should I do something that I read in a book five years ago? Or should I uh, do something that article that HBR pushed to me the other day, um, and they said, this is how you deal with that? Uh, or should I do something that somebody else who is successful in the org around you does? The answer always is, no, do what you would do. Do what you would do. So 
look inside, find yourself and figure out what you want to do. That's the only way. That's the only way to build trust. So this is one of the underlying qualities without which you cannot build trust with people. If you cannot be yourself, um, I won't be able to trust you. Who are you? For anyone of us to be able to trust someone, you need to understand that person as to who they are. If they're shifting all the time, if they're doing one thing one day, the other thing the other day, you're, you're not going to be able to trust them. So be authentic. Remember this. Whenever you have a question in front of you, what should I do right now? Be you. Um, the other quality. Um, let's do a show of hand. How many of you have uh, seen an email from somebody and had the urge to type out that angry response? <laughs> that, <Yes. laughs> <laughs> and just let it out. <laughs> I used to do that way back when. But this is the underlying quality that's going to help you um, keep your grace and deal with your discomfort. Um, the instance that we just talked about, it's a discomfort. There is something that's triggering you in the wrong way. Okay? And... Um, you have to be compassionate towards yourself first. That, okay, this is not the kind of person I want to be, but yeah, I can get this way sometimes and I can cut myself slack. Be compassionate towards yourself first and be compa compassionate towards that other person. Who knows what's going on in their life? Who knows what kind of pressures they're de dealing with? Who knows what their boss is asking from them? Who knows what deadline they're missing or might miss if they don't hear from you urgently. And if you keep this in your mind, this underlying quality, be compassionate. This will help you um, understand others. This will help you grow people. All of us have gaps. If you're compassionate towards our own gaps or the gaps of the people that you work with, then only you can help them grow. This is a quality that will help you deal with your own discomfort. So keep this one in mind too. Um, and the last one, to be able to build the three competencies we talked about, um, be present, be curious in the moment. Uh, how many of you have heard of the term that's going around nowadays for this? Mindfulness? Right, okay, that's that essentially. Um, yeah, they keep bringing up these buzzwords. They keep changing the marketing around it. And <laughs> <laughs> that's essentially this. Um, and mindfulness is about being present in the moment, being curious about what's going on with you, not with anybody else. What's going on with you? Understanding that. Ask the question, why? Um, ask yourself, why am I upset with this? Or why am I being triggered by this? That itself will calm you down. So try that out. Um, but being present, being curious, being mindful um, is essentially um, what is going to make you better. One of, one of the best coaches I worked with last year, Annette, Annette told this to me. Um, she is like, the most powerful person in the room is the one who has the most resources at their disposal. And she did not mean people or um, computers. By resources, she was talking to your own resources. Your prefrontal cortex, our thinking brain, the intelligent brain that um, made us what we are as human species, keeping your um, brain active in the creative thinking mode. Your heart your feelings, accessing your feelings, because they also guide a lot of your thinking, um, and your gut. <coughs> so um, feeling into those three things will help you be the most powerful person in conversations. Because if you keep your cool and are, and are able to access all your creative resources, gut, your brain, your feelings, then over time, you will see um, the kind of leverage this gives you 
is um, unlimited. And this is not easy to do, by the way. And I'll go get, get into that when I um, start describing the hows. So the three qualities that we talked about, be um, authentic, be compassionate, be mindful. So we covered the what's. Um, let me give you a sneak peek into what your day-to-day -day is going to look like from activity perspective as you become better and better or um, as you become um, more and more um, capable of being a true leader, so to speak. And I thought about this a lot. Um, and the simplest way to pull it up for all of us and the simplest way I could think about this is when you start, <coughs> your day is all about your own to-dos, right? You're focused on the things I am doing, the things I need to um, deliver, the code I need to write, the report I need to deliver, the uh, meeting I need to schedule. It's all about doing things by yourself, okay? As you progress and as you keep getting better and better as a leader that um, ignites other leaders, it moves to you're spending most of your time in enabling others. So um, if you look at a calendar of a person who's in leadership position, um, it's just meetings, right? We all know. They just uh, sit with people all day long and have conversations. So your focus shifts, your activity focus shifts from um, you doing something to enabling others to do things um, for their own growth, for business outcomes, or whatever you are trying to get done uh, from your organizations. So that's the simplest way of thinking about it. It all becomes about talking to people. You're just talking to people all day long. That becomes your life. So a good test to uh, decide whether you even want to go in this direction do you get energy from talking to people, or does that drain you? It's, it's a really quick, quick way to decide whether this is going to be a really, really hard road for you, or whether this is going to be enjoyable for you, because you like talking to interesting people. That's what it is, right? This, and this is what it will enable. And uh, when I thought about uh, mindset uh, and shifting it as you are progressing in your journey, um, in my first three years as a manager, um, I used to be in a role of a judge for my people, which is a shitty way to uh, grow your team, by the way. Don't do it. <laughs> but um, they would be on their own, essentially. I wouldn't help them with anything. I wouldn't tell them anything. Um, I would... S look at what they did over a year, and then I gave them, all right, you got a seven, you got a 10, you got an eight, right? I was, I was playing the role of a judge. And as I started learning more about, okay, what does it mean to be a good leader? What does it mean to um, get better at this and gain mastery? I started including teaching as part of the thing where, oh, I see, okay, you're having trouble with this particular thing. Let me teach you. Okay, so that you can start getting better at it. Um, so I started moving in that direction. And um, in the more advanced phases, which is the hardest skill, I started coaching people. And the difference between teaching and coaching is, um, and the three people that have been doing it for more than five years, they probably know this, um, is teaching is, um, let's say, Annie. Okay, I'm going to shift now. <laughs> Let's say Annie um, is saying, hey, I really want to uh, learn how to do this well. Let's say, right, as my career goal, whatever they have in mind. Then I sit with her, walk her through, all right, this is the best way that I know of and that I've seen work for other people to get uh, the learning that you're looking for. Coaching is about um, same thing. Annie comes to me and says, hey, I really want to get uh, better at something. I will probably start with, why do you want to get better at this? Okay? You start with the why and um, help them surface the reasons they're trying to do something 
so that they can tie it back to, does that really get me to the outcome I myself want for myself? Um, what Kara was saying earlier, right? You first need to ask the questions. Uh, what do I want? And once that's clear, you focus on a few things to go there. And if Annie um, came to me bringing up a skill I know that's not going to help her for what she wants, I'm not going to tell her that. I will just ask her questions so that she realizes it for herself. So coaching becomes more of ask the right questions so that the person finds the solution themselves, person figures it out uh, by themselves. That's the only way to you making them leaders or you making them independent where they can be on their own. So it's really hard. And this is another one where uh, I constantly bite my tongue, where I have the answer at the tip of my tongue, but you have to um, work at this one. It doesn't come easy. This was the hardest one, one of the hardest ones. So in terms of um, just a recap of day-to-day, -day, you move from to-do to to-enable conversations, talking to people. That becomes your life. And um, one quick thing around that, because your life becomes dictated to you almost, uh, you get interrupted all day for conversations, which means if you want to grow yourself, you do have to find extra time for that. You have to find extra time for your learning. You have to find extra time for whichever initiative you take up in the organizations. So it is, um, it is a lot of hours, for sure, if you want to succeed. It is a lot of hard work. Uh, there is no shortcuts to this. So going in here, knowing that um, this is going to be a hard journey, um, if it appeals to you, go for it. Um, but And the mindset change uh, to finish up, you move from judging to teaching and coaching. And based on who you're working with, you actually change your strategy between teaching and coaching and what they need um, what's the optimal uh, strategy for this particular individual, knowing what their gaps are, knowing what they want to do in life, and knowing uh, where they seem to be struggling. So, which is why it's uh, art and science. There is no instruction booklet around how do you um, teach or coach a particular human being. All right. Um, so now to how to do it. You guys heard me talk for about uh, 30 minutes about what. And let's get into the how. Are you ready? Okay. It's really straightforward. It's really easy, but I'll go into it. Um, before I get into that, how many of you uh, seen leaders around you that talk the talk but don't walk the talk? Okay. I'm going to ask you to uh, invoke your compassion for them. <laughs> no, I'm serious. So <laughs> I used to get pissed off when I saw people in positions uh, with high titles who talked the talk, who were really good at saying what it, what it means to be a good leader and this is how you should be, and they wouldn't walk the talk. I used to get really pissed off till I read a book called The Knowing Doing Gap. I read that, which is uh, six years ago, and I'm like, oh, this is what is going on with them. And then I became more um, passionate, uh, compassionate towards them. I'm like, oh, I see you. You might want to, but you don't know how to. Just wanting to do something doesn't overnight make us uh, turn into this new self that you're trying to um, evolve into. So be compassionate. When you see people around that are saying things but are not really acting by it, um, they're probably trying. They probably want to, but they just don't know how. Um, and uh, the breaking barriers or uh, breaking our own glass ceiling, just one, one reminder that there is no one glass ceiling. We are all going to break through multiple of them if you keep wanting to master the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. 
um, if you want to keep growing in this journey, um, this will be a constant learning. So if you don't like learning and mastery, maybe this is not your thing because this is a lifelong thing. Um, as I was telling you, 10 years down, um, 10 years out, I'm still, I still feel like, oh, I just began. Um, and it's a constant learning. So how do you do this? You start with knowing where you are, right? Before you can decide what you need to work on, you need to know where you are. And um, I'll tell you a little story. Uh, but the point I'm trying to bring up with that story is don't be delusional about your own abilities. I've done that quite a bit in the past, and I hope I do it less and less now. But uh, one of my really good bosses in early in my career of three years, after I started working three or four years, she was one of the uh, good leaders I've been through. Um, but she tried giving me feedback, okay? That was the first time anybody gave me feedback. Um, and I screamed at her for almost an hour, I think. <laughs> yes. And I'm meeting her tomorrow, by the way. Um, I still stay in touch with her. Uh, she didn't fire me. <laughs> she was a good leader. She let me went. And then I went off, and I thought about what she said, and I... Like, uh, ooh, and, and then finally, after maybe two, three weeks, I went back to her, and she acted as if nothing happened. She was very gracious. Uh, she handled it really, really well. Uh, I asked her, hey, by the way, the other, thing, the other day, the thing you were saying, can you tell me more? <laughs> so I had to first bring myself to a level where I could hear it. Um, and... I was very delusional, um, and I try not to be anymore. But um, so assessment, self-assessment is key. And the thing that I want to bring up for this particular thing is uh, what Kara was saying earlier. Befriend the opposition party, OK? Um, your boss, your peers, your team members that actually um, are trying to give you feedback. It's really hard to give feedback. We all know that. It's really hard to give. So when someone gives you feedback, say thank you. Um, and try to hold, don't scream the way I did. <laughs> um, but every time I hear the word till today, even if I know it's a gift, I want it, I want it. Anybody, anytime anybody says the word feedback, my heart goes, <laughs> right? That's discomfort. So I've learned to detect it and say, no, this is a good thing. Calm down. you got to talk to yourself and ask them for more. But feedback is a gift. That's the only way you will know where you stand today for you to then decide, okay, what is the next thing I should work on? Um, learn constantly. Read. Read. I've read all the leadership classics. I've read any new book that comes out that people talk about. Uh, many of them are crap, by the way. It's more marketing. Uh, there is nothing useful in there. Um, but lately, I shifted towards uh, neuroscience and team dynamics, um, mainly because I want to just learn more. How do human beings operate when they're put together? And what properties emerge? And can you even control? I mean, just looking at the Uber mess, he doesn't know how to run a large body of people and how to um, navigate. I don't know him personally, so I'm going to leave it at that. He just doesn't know what he's doing, um, and I'm going, going to give him the benefit of doubt. He uh, probably is truly doesn't know what he's doing. But learn constantly. Experiment. This is the other thing, experiment. And um, I'll tell you... Um, I took up a job uh, a few years ago, which for the wrong reasons, okay? And that's the reason I'm bringing it up. I took up a job for the wrong reasons. I, I thought what was going to make me happy was a bigger title, okay? Uh, and then I said, okay, I'm not sure, but let me ask for it and see how it goes. I've never shied from asking for things, by the way. That has never been my problem. Uh, but I, so I went to my boss. I'm like, I want this new role that you guys are hiring for. Um, and she said, uh, okay, 
And then I took that role. I hated it. <laughs> I hated it to the core. And I tried it for like nine months, and then I quit. Because I, I, like, I thought this is what I wanted. Right? I was all confused. And that was the big pause that I took. I'm like, okay, what the hell is going on? Let me figure out what I want. And um, that big pause. So um, experiment. Anytime I've learned something really insightful about myself is when I did something that I wasn't sure about. I did something where um, I, was, uh, I was scared. I was anxious. Whenever I did that, so experiment. Uh, it's, a, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint to your career. Don't treat it as, oh, my God, if I take that wrong turn, I will never get back on track. No, you will learn a lot if you take the wrong turns. That's the only way um, to learn a lot. And if you forget anything I said before this, okay, throw everything out. This is the one thing that I know is the only thing that helps you develop a competency or a skill, whatever is on your list. All our lists are different depending on where you are and what you want to do. But this is the only way you can develop something um, that you want to daily practice. There's no other way. Daily practice. You cannot make a goal quarterly goal, do a checkpoint, look back and say, oh, didn't really happen, and keep going that way. It doesn't work. Daily practices. And I'll give you an example of the one I'm focusing on right now. Mindfulness has been my thing for the last three years. It takes a long time to calm ourselves down in any and all situations. So it's going to take me a long time, but um, I'll tell you the what I started with. So mindfulness, that was such a big thing. Be present, be curious. Okay, what does it mean? And how am I supposed to do this? Um, I first, uh, and I had a really good boss that helped me think through this, coached me through this. And like, we first figured out what were the symptoms um, that were showing up for me uh, whenever there was discomfort, right? For example, my particular one was, I used to get impatient in conversations or meetings when things weren't moving. That was my symptom. For each of you, it's going to be different. I used to get uh, impatient. And there's a reason. I'm goal-oriented. I want to achieve things. Um, I want to get stuff done. And when, whenever there was delay, when conversation were rambling on, when people weren't just moving on and just getting to action, I would start feeling impatience, irritation. Okay? So I started with figuring out the symptom for me. I, um, and I started with baby steps. Um, I had a five-minute early morning where I started with intent. What's my intent today? Detection. That's all. Don't think about the change yet. Figure out the symptom. Start with detection. Five minutes in the morning. Okay, I want to, as much as possible, detect whenever I'm feeling that through the day, as I'm going through the day. Then try to do it through the day. It's not possible, I'll tell you. You won't be able to. And then, end of the day, five minutes. Look back. How many times was I able to detect today? In the beginning, I tried this, and I wasn't really detecting anything. I said, okay, let me uh, bring down the scope. Let me, mornings, I would do, let me pick one meeting during the day, where all I'm doing is trying to detect. Just one meeting. Okay? And then I started there. And I started sh seeing progress. And then I said, okay. Then I expanded to, okay, now let me see if I can do it all day. And in the beginning, I started, oh, I only, did, I only felt that way two times during the day. As I uh, started getting better at detecting it, um, the number kept on going up, not down. <laughs> so I was just getting good at detecting it. Um, and then it got really high. I'm like, shit, this is too much. No wonder I'm not thinking well. And then I started working at the next step when I uh, could detect it confidently, which is, okay, now that I've figured out when I do it, um, can I be curious when that happens? 
Can I ask myself, what, why? And then it started going in the right direction where I didn't lose it or where I didn't lose um, the, uh, the patience and all that. So this is just to give you an example of, this is the only way you will develop any capability you're trying to develop. Harder it is, longer it's going to take. Um, don't lose patience, but if this is, if one of the things that you take away today, it's this. And um, good luck, <laughs> but it's a long journey. Um, and I'm going to leave you with uh, one of the biggest secrets that I've personally experienced, which is not this, by the way. So make it two things that you walk out of here with. <laughs> is um, self-awareness, learn, experiment, daily practice. And that's the recap. But find a leader that has the ability to grow people. As we were saying earlier, it's very different for each person. And um, unless a per somebody has de developed the capability to coach you, to be able to grow you, it's just, it will be a longer road for you. So the secret to fast track, so to speak, to grow is of the 10 leaders that I had, two of them were really, really good at this. And that is the four years in my 10 years that I have grown the fastest. So if there's one thing uh, that you can do, you need to find somebody who can help you through the journey because we don't know enough. You always have to find somebody who knows more than you about something that you're trying to do. And um, if you're in a situation where you can't change your boss or um, it's just not the right time, find somebody around in the organizations like this and just ask them if they can be your mentor. That one is easier to do. Look at, uh, try to detect a leader. And it's generally, if people are talking good things about them, not their bosses, their people. Um, so some of the things to detect them. Um, and if generally people like them, um, that's probably a person. And the other sign to look for is have people uh, gotten promotions under them? Have you seen people develop under them? So that's generally a sign that, oh, okay, so they probably know how to um, help people grow. So if there's one thing that you want to walk out with, it's this one. And the second thing is daily practice. But for the daily practice, if you have someone who can help you through, oh, what are my symptoms? What should I even be looking for? How should I even detect it? So you need somebody who can help you through this. Uh, either find a boss that will do it for you or find a mentor that can uh, potentially. Boss, it's easier because they observe you, right, through the day and they see you more in action so they can actually give you feedback um, when they see something. We're like, oh, well, well, you did that again, right? Just saying, you did that again. You said 10, but you did it 15 times. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you need feedback. You want feedback. Um, so that's the last thing I want to leave you guys with. Questions? Yes. I'm just wondering, because you mentioned some poster for the one for you that you've got named out earlier. Do you have like a list of just a few books that you recommend for um, management activities in your opinion? Yes, sure. Um, so depending on what where you are, it'll be different ones, but um, good to great talks a lot about the level five leader. That's a good one. Um, Oh, sorry. Yes. Thank you, Jitender. Um, she asked, what books would you recommend? Um, and depending on where you are in the career, I would recommend different books. For the beginning phases, some of the ones um, I like is Being the Boss. It gives you very practical insights into the early leadership phases. Um, the higher level stuff, good to great covers, um, how to be a level five leader. Um, and as you get advanced, um, the other one, I uh, break all the rules is another one that uh, kind of calls out some of the contrarian things that are not, uh, that you don't see around too much. And some of the advanced ones that I um, recently read, I read a lot of books and which is where I don't remember the names. I just remember the learning from it because I learned so many. 
um, but the business books are um, Innovator's Dilemma, all Malcolm Gladwell's books, they're really good. Some of his stuff, you have to check the references because he's using stuff out of context. Um, but it's still a good read, um, and some of the insights are great. The one that is uh, that was really helpful for me, if you're into spiritual reading, um, it's very practical, though, for the mindfulness stuff, is Start Where You Are. That's a really good one. It's really small chapters and easy read, uh, but it depends on where you are in the journey. You might like it or you might go, what is this? <laughs> right. So it depends on where you are at. Um, and um, yeah, and I could send out a list um, if people are interested. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, because this is an ad hoc, right? Um, I couldn't, but I could um, look back at my list and send something. Yeah, sure. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, so you mentioned that you were in front of the discomfort is a really right. important quality in the leader. Um, do you have any tips for getting? better at that and like uh, for diagnosing how you react in discomfort and how to improve that, how you're reacting. Um, if you can, try try to find the symptoms. I'll oh, repeat the questions. Um, she's asking about uh, what strategies to use uh, to deal with discomfort. Did I capture it right? Okay. Um, Try to first detect discomfort, okay? And uh, be curious about it. Ask yourself, why am I feeling this way? Just ask why. Um, and that will help you unravel uh, what's going on potentially. Um, and the uh, book I'm reading uh, that I mentioned to her is uh, Start Where You Are. That gives you um, additional tips to be able to quiet down your own mind and um, kind of controlling your own narrative. Because these are all thoughts that we make up. They're coming from our own brain. So how do you kind of calm down the narrative and come back to normal? Um, so that's a book that will give you some more uh, tips. Yeah? Yes? Uh, what's something that you've learned uh, from someone that you've actually managed? And what have they taught you about being a better manager? Uh, I'll tell you one. All of them teach me all the time, by the way. Um, <laughs> yes, uh, she's asking, what have you learned from someone you have managed? Um, uh, the latest one, I'll tell you, um, in the last few years. So um, most of the people that um, want to grow, they are ambitious. They want to put in the work, and they actually want you to give them feedback if you're able to build trust with them, right? So I start with building trust. Once they trust me, then they're open with me and they tell me what's going on with them and I can ask them questions and they won't take it in the wrong way um, because I'm being their coach, not a judge. But one of them, um, I was really having trouble trying to figure out what, what motivates them. Okay? And um, I tried asking different questions. I tried to figure out, okay, what do you care about in life? What motivates you? Um, I was never able to figure it out. It was very humbling. So the learning I took away from that was um, sometimes you won't be able to. Sometimes you just have to let time pass by before they uh, come to a state of mind where they are motivated. So that was one of uh, the learnings, which is harder for me because I'm like, well, wait, I'm a, if, if I'm a really good leader, I should be able to write. So it, that is very humbling. Um, and you had your hands. Yes. Oh, yeah. I was wondering um, if you had any tips about, like, lots of times people work with other people who right. are in a different location. Are yes. My, yeah. my manager. Um, that sort of thing, is that is it like, even to the extent of, oh, it's better to do Skype and see their face yes. than talk on the phone, or is it in the email, or how often should, you know, I, just that sort of thing. How, so the question, and correct me if it's not right, uh, is how should you uh, work with a remote manager? 
are kind of, kind yeah. Like, I'd love to have a mentor, but I never come down here to Palo Alto. I'm always at home, so I don't... I don't oh. You know, or, or, you know, or, <coughs> Trying to coach someone long distance. Oh, long distance coaching. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll tell you what um, I believe. It's really hard to coach people and build a relationship with them if you don't have enough face to face interaction. Um, so, uh, for example, I have a team in Dublin and um, we hired our first person who I asked that person to be here for four months before they went there because I needed to understand them and they needed to understand me for us to have that foundation of trust first. And then it was easier to then do it um, um, remotely. And after that point, the rest of the team, then I I hired a manager. So I I hired a leader so that they can hire their team. Um, instead of trying to do it remotely, remotely it's, it doesn't work. Human beings, we need we need to see people, we need to feel uh, people, and we need to see what's going on our, on our faces and uh, what gut feeling you're getting from people to be able to adjust um, and navigate. Um, I don't know if that helped, but that's what at least so, my personal. That was my fear of, of probably what the answer is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> At least, yeah, I mean, if, if you're able to get some face time during the year, go for it, ask for it, I would say. Um, yeah, ask for it, and ideally you get it. Yes? You know, you were mentioning that as a leader, you need to build trust, your are Now, it happens that sometimes, you know, somebody wants to change their role, or they want to be yes. the team, but you don't want them to be the team. Right. You know, they're working with. How do you deal with this? Um, she asked, um, when you come uh, deal with a situation where uh, somebody wants to, someone wants to change a team, do something different, but that's not optimal for what you want as an outcome, what do you do? Um, for personally, for me, my goal is to help them grow. And if what the team is doing today does not give them the material to be able to grow, then I actually find other teams for them. I am just one stop in their journey. And I tell this to all my people all the time. Okay, I I know you're not going to stay with me forever or this company forever, but while you're here, I will help you grow all the skills we can provide with everything that's going on with the team. If they're trying to get into something new that our team doesn't do, then I talk to the other manager to say, hey, I have a really great person who doesn't want talent, right? Um, and then um, we just pass them along. And Workday is great. We allow people or we want people to move around, actually, um, if that, that's the best thing for them. Um, I always go by what's the best thing for that person um, and then make a decision based on that. Yes. Um, how do you evaluate when you're ready <coughs> to move to uh, from a manager to a director? But do, how do you evaluate your credit and how do you improve? Do you wait for the management to give you or do you do it yourself? So she's asking, how do you evaluate if you're ready for that next promotion in leadership? Is that the sense of, do you wait for your manager? To do it for you, or do you uh, go for it yourself? There's quite a bit of questions in there, but um, <laughs> I'll tell you at least from what I have done. Um, I don't wait around for people to evaluate me. Um, I understand what does it mean to perform at this next level, right? And then you get help from your boss and everybody around you saying, okay, can you? walk me through what capabilities I need to develop or what am I missing, what are my gaps. And then you come up with your own plan around, okay, all right, so I need to do this, that, that. Um, Then you work out, okay, what project can I work on that will help me build that, right? Because just from reading, you don't learn or develop something new. Um, So I would say um, drive it yourself. Make use of people around you to understand what does it mean. And it's different in each company, by the way which is why you need to have that conversation to understand what does it mean to be at that next level at this company 
and can you help me figure out how best can I build my capabilities so I can do a kick-ass job um, at that next level. Any other questions? Well, thank you. Thank you, Madhura. Yeah, yes.